is Kang Westerveld and I've been working for FASAS I think now something like 22 years and my field of expertise is science and technology studies combined with sound studies. The grant is a personal grant awarded by NWO and NWO is the Dutch NSF. It's the institution that funds uh, the research usually by people you know, working at universities, but we, it's external funding. But most of the money is actually for PhD students and postdocs. So it's about, in, in my case, it is one, um, over one million euros, but it could have been even more, like uh, a one and a half a million euros. But I already had hired uh, two PhD students uh, through the, the, the FASAS graduate school. Uh, so we, we already had these two PhD students in the project from the competition, but that's the internal competition. You are only eligible if you already have an established group of researchers working on a particular research line. And, and the two PhDs that are already in the project are all also already in their second year. They have already published their first uh, result and we've been working on a sound studies handbook for Oxford Universities, uh, or universities together with Trevor Pinch. This project is about uh, sound and listening in science, technology and uh, medicine or science engineering and medicine and these are also the, the the fields that we are going to examine to see how historically um, all kinds of scientists have listened what kind of instruments they used what kind of knowledge they generated uh, but especially and that is actually the key question uh, why in many cases this um, uh, acquiring of knowledge through listening and through using sound was replaced again by all kinds of visual representation and visual instruments. What we see is that with the um, rise of new all kinds of new technologies, digital technologies for instance, the use of sound is, is interesting sometimes in, in new ways again. And so also the how, how technology has developed is also important in this in this project and and it's one of the reasons why sound is important in science five years exactly five years and you you only get the money if you can you know uh, show a quite elaborate and detailed plan uh, on how you're going to do such a large research project you have a, a group of persons work, working on the same topic they really inspire each other that's I mean we have all kinds of meetings in which not only one PhD is there but one PhD with two supervisors or two PhDs with four supervisors or we have all the PhDs on sound together or or we have all PhDs on SDS together they are both very very good students I really have to stress that they are exceptionally good and so they came up with lots of literature that was relevant and that inspired me I mean most of the literature I knew I knew I had I had read before that they sort of I mean by writing they order things they yeah they they come up with particular links that I would not have seen uh, before the other way in, in which I think the relationship between teaching and research is very good is in the sense that you'll have, if you make an, uh, a module and assignments, of course you reread the, the literature with a different, in a different way, with a different eye for the connection to the life world of the student. As a consequence of the project and you know the sort of publicity you get from that, more and more people come to me asking me can I do uh, a, a master thesis? Can I do a PhD uh, or, or a bachelor thesis or whatever? But now I sometimes have to say, no, at the moment I do not have the, the time and the opportunity because I have to focus on these research projects. Start from your own interests or 
I mean, it can also be something negative in the sense that something bothers you in the world, something from everyday world, something political. But it's only the beginning. Uh, on the one hand, you need to be very passionate and you have to invest a lot of time and energy in your research, but you also have to be distanced in the sense that you have to formulate your questions in such a way that another person could also do the work. I like Jonathan Stern's The Audible Past very much and Emily Thompson's The Soundscape of Modernity. These are the two books that are sort of key pieces within the field of sound studies. One of the books we used for the project was Lorraine Destin's and Peter Gallison's book on mechanical objectivity.